Hey friends. Well, I've got... I've had one of those days, one of those mornings, where... start my morning, start my day, do my yoga. And, you know, every once in a while, I feel like I'm getting a message that impresses upon me what I am actually committed to. Not in the form of me feeling I am committed to this, but actually in the form of revealing something through my consistent behavior. Like, I got up a little late this morning. We went to bed pretty late. Katie had a thing in the evening. It was a bit of a rough evening with Annalise. Not rough, but she just had trouble settling down. And So, you know, the evening took a little extra time. And so I slept in a little bit. Um, and when it came time to wake up Annalise, which is basically, you know, the reason why I wake her up at a specific time every day is to set our routine for the morning so that we can enjoy ourselves, have a little bit of playtime, and also do our violin practice. We do that in the morning because it's really the only time I've found that we can make it really consistent. And I was coming up on that time, six o'clock, and I was like, and I was running, everything was running a little behind, but I was like, but I should wake her. And I, I saw, heard her in the monitor sort of stirring right around. She tends to like anticipate now about when I'm going to come into her room. So she sort of starts to wake up. And, and, I, and I thought to myself, well, I could take a few more minutes and just finish up making breakfast and maybe do a little, you know, take the compost out to the street, etc. But I, something in my mind was like, no, just be rigorous about this. Just, you know, get up and, and, and get, wake Annalise and, and start your day. Do that part of the day with real intention, with real rigor. So I did. I went back right at six o'clock and she was already kind of awake. She wasn't awake, awake, but she was kind of ready to get up. And we came out. We had a lovely time. We hid this stuffed dragon around the room as we sort of were coming to and just embracing the day. And then we started our violin practice. And I'd been talking to her about doing some ear training and playing scales and playing notes and teaching her the different solfege. She already knows do re mi fa sol la ti do. I'm now I'm teaching her the permutations where you like have a raised fourth. So instead of do re mi fa sol, you have do re mi fi sol or do re me. You lower the third, mi becomes me. Do re me fa sol. Just playing around with that, and she nailed it. She was she was hearing really well. I I, I recently. Um, did a Montessori in the home class. I mentioned it in my post yesterday. They talked about the absorbent mind of kids her age. And what that means, absorbent mind, was a term that I believe Maria Montessori coined to describe the way that, that children at that age kind of lose themselves in their activity. They're not consciously discriminating, how do I do this? they are absorbing it. They're, they're, and and I, I know this, I, I can sort of relate to this from my personal experience because I was in my absorbent mind period of childhood when my family moved to Germany and I just absorbed German. I was put in a German kindergarten and I figured out how to speak German in like four to six months. I was a fluent German speaker. 
and I never had to think about it. It wasn't until much later in my academic, uh, like in college, a little bit in a little bit in middle school, high school, but really it was in college where I started to analyze the German language and understand how the grammar works. But up to that point, I just spoke perfect German without knowing the rules of the grammar. And, and, and the, the teacher the other day at the Montessori in the home class described, you know, the difference between learning a language when you're in that age of the absorbent mind versus learning it as an adult when you actually have to think, oh, okay, well, now you're going to get these articles and they're going to stack up in these clauses and then you're going to get the verb at the end of the sentence, which is not always how, you know, like you, you'll, you'll start to notice the structural distinctions between one language and the other, and that'll be how you internalize the language. But that's not what happened to me at, at you know, that's not, that's not how I learned German. So I have some kind of sense of how that can work. And so all, all that is to say, I started to think about that in relation to the work that I do with Annalise on violin and her ear training and just what, she, what she's capable of kind of imbibing at this point in her, in her development. And it's exciting to me to see someone that age really absorbing a language, absorbing the language of music in a way that just makes certain things self-evident to her. I can play certain phrases on the piano and she immediately knows what they are in solfege. And now there are other things, other times I'll play something and if she doesn't immediately know what it is, then she almost doesn't know that she can think about it and figure it out. I, that's the part that I feel like I'm coaxing out of her is, well, you actually do know this, honey. You know all, you know how to find these pitches and you know how to label them with solfege. So you actually could use what you know and you're, she's got an amazing ear. You, you actually could use your ear to, to figure out what some of these sounds are. But that's a step she's not quite, she's, she, she'll do a little bit of it. She'll do it if I sort of spoon feed her most of the steps. And I've seen her a handful of times do it completely on her own. Um, but the other thing I saw today, so after we did a little of that, anyway, I'm, I'm, all, I'm still going somewhere. I, after we did a little bit of that, she started playing her minuet, minuet in G. But she wasn't playing it in G. She was starting like on the A string and going, no, I think she was starting on the, where was she starting? She was starting like uh, way up here on the E string. So she's just playing her song in a new key and it meant she had to move her hand way up. She had to go to these new positions that she's really only played as scales. Um, I have no idea why she did that. She just, just, she just was trying it out and she was just all of a sudden exploring by ear, by sound, how can I play the same piece in a different key? And that's so much fun to watch, to watch, to watch a young person start to have their mind open like that. And just... absorb the language of music. So, and then we had a, we, we had a, you know, the, we did some other things that she was a little less enthusiastic about, but by and large, we had a really great practice session. And it really felt like one where she, for, for the bulk of it, she was just kind of doing stuff for the fun of it, which is something that the Montessori in the home class really has encouraged in me. There's a fair amount of difficulty in learning an instrument like violin and I am starting to recognize you know that's that's just the case and so the real the real approach is to take a long-term view let this take the time it takes and just be really consistent just be just show up every day and do a little bit and and and, and play
play in that world and make it about playing in the world. If she's playing in the world of sound, just trying things out, fooling around, putting a piece in a new key, which on violin just means moving over one string, but then the way she did it, she had to then use completely new positions um, to, in order to play it, which was like a whole other kind of ear exercise for her. Um, but anyway, all of this All of this helps me kind of see just where I can be easy and trusting of myself, where I can allow my natural state to be enough, not a bunch of compensatory, urgent, mind-driven, goal-oriented work, but just letting myself be myself, letting my daughter be my daughter, letting things happen as they need to, and being okay with the fact that that's where we're at, you know, be, being, being just present with where we are and letting presence be progress, right? We get so caught in the idea of progress. I get caught on the idea of my own progress. I get caught on the idea of my daughter's progress. So, but ultimately, it's not about that kind of progress. That kind of progress is an outgrowth of presence. It is a subsidiary, it's a subordinate category of progress. Presence is what we're really after. And presence is what really ultimately produces all that progress, easily and effortlessly. So, that's, my, that's where I'm at today. Presence equals progress. Thanks for watching, folks. Appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. See you soon.